Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how you can easily make a web map with QGIS. Uh, if you're into GIS, you know that sharing your maps can be really difficult. Uh, if you're trying to share shape files or rasters with the symbology, it means you have to package everything up as a project and also share the data. However, if we do this as a web map, which we can do with the QGIS, it makes it really easy for the people you pass the map on to, to be able to open it with a web browser instead of needing to understand the data types, the symbology, and the software that goes with it. So let's go ahead and get started. Make sure you have QGIS opened up, and the first thing we need to do is install the QGIS2 web plugin. So let's go to plugins, manage and install plugins, and I'm going to go to all, and I'm going to search for QGIS2 web. I'm going to click on it here, and then I'll click install plugin. This will take just a minute to install, and then we'll be ready to go. While this installs, I'll just let you know that step-by-step -step instructions for this are up on my website. You can see this is installed successfully, um, and so we can go ahead and continue. And I, as I was saying, I'll link to those instructions on opensourceoptions.com in the description here. We can go ahead and close our plugins now. Now we can go to web. We have QGIS to web, and we can create web map. We're not going to do that just yet. We're going to add in some data first. So I have some data here. I'm going to add in the state population layer. Um, if you're interested in how to make this layer, it's part of my QGIS for beginners course, uh, which you can access at geospatialschool.com. So we have this here. I want to go in to um, create some graduated symbology and we'll change the value here. Um, I think our population estimate 2019. And let's do an equal interval. And let's do, let's try equal counts. Let's do it like this, and we'll be good like that. So you can see that we're, we're based on population now. We have um, adjusted that symbology. Okay, now let's go ahead and add in another layer. Um, I'm going to add in these points. I'm not exactly sure what they are, but we'll add them in and we'll see where they show up. Um, we'll just say okay to this projection. And you can see that I've got some points clustered in this location here. Okay. So now we have this map. Um, and we want to be able to share this with folks. We want to be able to make a web map out of this that we can open in our browser. And this is where the QGIS to web plugin comes in. So let's go ahead and open up that QGIS to web plugin. And let's create a web map. You're going to get this window that pops up. You're going to have... Um, a couple of accordions here. You have layers and groups, and within that you have an accordion for each of the layers we have here. So we have my points and we have state population. So what we can do is we can make this visible and we can allow pop-ups. And what the pop-ups allow is for us to click on the feature and get a pop-up of the attributes. And that's and so we can adjust labels and things here and let's look update preview real quick and see what our map looks like so i can demonstrate some of these things okay so here's our preview so if i click on alaska it's not going to let me click to generate the the update um but you can see basically what our map is going to look like here and we can adjust the extent and everything there Okay, uh, so I'll just show you what these look like. Let's just do some different labels here so you can see. We have no label. We have ID is no label. Type inline, and we'll make ID to a header label. And we'll just do that with these points for now so we can demonstrate the differences. Okay, um, now another setting we have here is the ability to use open layers, leaflet, or map box. And these are different web mapping libraries 
that use web languages like JavaScript, HTML, and CSS to produce web maps. And so what this plugin is doing is taking these layers, it's putting them into a format that Open Layers, Leaflet, or Mapbox can understand, and it's writing the code to display those as a web page. Um, you should be able to use any of these without any trouble. Um, with some of them, you might need an API key. Like with Mapbox, you might need an API key for this to work. I'm not totally sure. Um, we can give it a try and see. I've used Open Layers and Leaflet most of the time because they are open source. Mapbox is not open source, but it does have uh, a lot of support for uh, non-paid users also. Okay, now let's go into the appearance. Um, we can adjust some things in here. You can add address search. So if we do search here, um, we have the preview. It should show us a search bar up here somewhere. That refresh, you can put the search, you can see the search button there. We can geolocate the user, which will show our location. We can highlight on hover. We can add a search in a layer. I'm not gonna worry about that. We can add a measure tool. So we're gonna have like an imperial metric tool, imperial measure tool, which will put something here. Um, when we refresh, we can have a canvas size or a full screen map. Um, and we can set extents and zoom levels here if we're interested in doing that. We can also come in here and select the attributes that we want to show. Um, I don't wanna show all of these, I wanna show um, let's see, where's our population estimate? Nine, I think, is the one we used. And if I can find that real quick. And I can't seem to find it. I'm just going to select a few of these to show you what this looks like. So we can get the state FP. Um... Sure, let's just get the estimates. I use shift, I think you use control to select multiple or to deselect. Um, let's get the name and we'll just get this population estimate three. So let's, uh, let's just select those layers there. And there should be other ones for my points if I scroll down far enough. You can see here we can select the ones for my points also. Okay. Now we go to export and um, we have some options here. So precision, we can maintain it. I suggest using that. We can we want to select the specific folder to export to or we can export the FTP site. Um, I'm gonna export to a folder. I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna export this to my downloads folder. If you don't export the downloads, it'll put it in this directory, your app data, local temp, QGIS to web. But let's go, I'm gonna put this in my downloads and we'll just select that folder there. And then we have some settings. We can preview on startup. Um, we can preview, we set the feature limit for previewing, and then you have some help here. All right, that's really all we need to do. Um, that covers the plugin pretty well. Let's go ahead and click export and view this web map. So I'm exporting, and it's gonna take just a minute for this to happen, and then, it opened up this file, index.html. Now you'll notice that um, I can pan this map around. You can see it's just a specific size there. And um, I can zoom in on this. If I click on the state, right here we have Wyoming. It should give me a dialogue. Maybe I didn't set that up correctly. And we can zoom in on our points. and we can't click those yet. So let's go back and see if we can get those things to work out. So I'm gonna close this, and if that didn't open for you, let me show you how you can do that. I put mine in my downloads folder. So go to downloads. I have this QGIS to web folder. I'll open that up. And this index.html is what I want to open, and that brings up my map here. All right, now let's go back to um, our things here. And let's go to our appearance. 
layer search, show pop-ups on hover. Let's try to turn that on. Um, okay. Let's see if that works. We should be able to get a pop-up when we click on a feature. Okay, um, let's just check and make sure that everything looks good. I think we should be okay. Let's export this again. Come down here and click export. This will create a whole new folder and it should open my map automatically, which it did here. And now when I hover, you can see that it gives me that pop-up. You can see there's no, we just have a list of numbers here. We don't have any attribution or any other information with them. Let's zoom in on a point here. So if we go to a point, you can see how it did something different. Open, oh, I can't. But you can see at the top how we have the ID for the point, and it gives it a type, which is a park, and that's an inline heading. And then we have an ID of two, which is a header heading. Okay, and so you can see the differences between those there. Let's go back and let's try this, um, make some changes again, and we'll try it with uh, a different method for the export. So let's go and open our QGIS to web window back up. And if we go to appearance, sorry, we go to layers and groups. Um, so let's, change, let's change this to leaflet, first of all. We'll try leaflet. And it's gonna take a minute to generate that code. Um, let's go to appearance. Let's not show pop-ups on hover and not highlight on hover and update the preview. Let's pan and let's see if we can, if we double click or single click, we can open up those attributes. Now let's zoom in on a point and let's click on one of these. And you can see here the different attributes we have. And you can see how these are set up. We have no label on the first one. We have an inline label on the second one. And we have a header label on the third one. So you can see how those show up differently with your attributes. Now we can export this. And this will export to a new folder once again. We'll open up that index. And you can see here that when I click, I get all those attributes and I could go through and put labels on these so I knew what the what each column was representing. And you can do that, I'll just show you that as I've shown you already, but you can do that by going in and setting um, like inline labels or header labels on all of these. And if we update the preview, then you'll be able to see that here. So there we go. There's how you can make a web map that is interactive with QGIS. And if you're interested in this and interested in learning how to write the code for this, um, there will shortly, very shortly, be a new course up on geospatialschool.com that teaches you how to do this with Mapbox, how to make interactive custom web maps. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful. And thank you for watching.